A 79-year-old patient calls us and says, some of my teeth are loose. I want to see if you can save them. He's on Eliquis, and as you can see, there's some problems. Let's talk about how we handle him on practical treatment planning. So we'll review the x-rays one by one. You can see there's no support for tooth number three. Four and five do have some support. Heavy calculus here. Now look at six. Six does have good support, and part of this is our understanding that there is bone support. You know, we concentrate a lot on loss of bone support, but let's look at the bone support that is there. Eight and nine, not bad. I'll darken that up for you a little bit. Ten, there is that apical lucency right there. That's something that we need to pay attention to with the inadequate endo and post on that tooth. Uh, and we'll have to put that into perspective, and we will. If we take a look at 11, 12, and even 13, okay, loss of bone support here, but there's still bone support left. If we good look at the lower, yeah, 18 isn't looking so good. That's 17, actually. That's not looking so good, but 18 does have some bone support. So does 19. And as we go across, we take a look at the bone support that is there. Now, 24 and 25, I don't have a lot of confidence in this. This I have more confidence in. But as I'm looking at extracting, and we're going to extract this one, how easily do I replace it with something that's like this that's in the way? If I'm going to put an implant in later on, which we might or we might not, this would actually be put, it would be in the way of our placing an implant. So I'm going to choose to extract numbers 24 or 25 as part of initial preparation. We go across, 26 has some decent support. 27 does, you may choose to extract 26 depending upon the prosthetic plan. What we wanna do is extract minimal, a minimal number of teeth and be able to save um, all the teeth that we can save and just see how they do doing uh, periodontal treatment before we make our final decision. So that's the way we're going to go here. Yeah, there's a fracture on the distal aspect of, of tooth number 30, but um, there's still some bone support, 31. 32, I think you can see, are goners, aren't they? The treatment plan is going to be this. And number one, he's on, on Eliquis. And the question is, what do we do about Eliquis? And the answer is, we do nothing. We keep all of our patients on anticoagulants now. There's uh, a number of topical agents that we can use if we need to, but in a non-surgical case, we're not worried about that. Even with the extractions, we have some topical agents that we can use uh, in order to be able to achieve homos. Uh, uh, hemostasis. So there's almost no times that we'll take patients off of anticoagulants anymore. So what's the plan? Number one, we're going to we're going to scan for an Essex on numbers 24 and 25. Number two, we're going to extract numbers 3, 17, 24, 25, 31, 32, and we'll place the Essex on that day to replace numbers 24 and 25. Okay, number three, let's work with some oral hygiene instruction. Obviously, this is a big calculus case. He doesn't take care of his teeth at all. We use a certain periodontal kit. We like the Oral-B uh, IQ uh, toothbrush, and we just work with him in oral hygiene. His oral hygiene has to come up to snuff before we begin treatment. So that might require one, two, three, four visits. And yeah, you charge for the visits, a minimal amount, in order to be able to get the patient committed to taking care of his mouth. Next step will be oral DNA. And I want to run an oral DNA just to make sure that we're going to stay out of trouble. We're using fewer and fewer antibiotics these days. Why? Because the microbiome is so important. And if this is a calculus case, which this is, and the body may be capable of healing without using the antibiotic assist, we'll see what the oral DNA test says before making uh, that decision. So let's take a look at the oral DNA test now. So as we look at the oral DNA test, you'll see there's high-risk pathogens no matter we look where we look. We just look at those and we say, all right, with those high-risk pathogens, what's the opportunity of spreading the disease as we do the treatment? So we look at the antibiotic options provided by oral DNA, and they list, as you can see here, amoxicillin and metronidazole. Given the pathogen, pathogenicity of these uh, teeth, Despite the fact that it's a heavy calculus case, we are going to prescribe antibiotics in conjunction with the periodontal treatment. Now, the antibiotic therapy is going to begin one day before we do our periodontal treatment. What's our periodontal treatment going to be? It's going to be perioscopy, and I think we've talked about this. But if you haven't been on one of these videos, uh, a perioscope is a tiny camera. It's an endoscope that goes down below the gum line so our hygienists can see the root magnified by 40 times. They can see the calculus and get all that calculus out. That's what's important here, and that's how we can complete and an entire case like this, non-surgically. Now, the patient will be in the chair for six hours. We'll divide it into two visits of three hours each in order to be able to accomplish the desired results.
So we will complete the periodontal treatment and we'll reevaluate the patient six weeks after we've done treatment. And then we'll decide on the next phase. Okay, primarily it's going to be how to replace numbers 24 and 25, but also we want to make sure that everything is, un, is under control at that point. Um, and that's the way we complete the, complete the case. Now, for those of you who are members of the IDS, we're going to talk with Courtney. Courtney is the one who went through the discussion with the patient. There was quite an interesting discussion. So for those who are members, you'll be able to see the, uh, the discussion that occurred and what happens, the back and forth, the give and take be between the treatment coordinator and uh, the dental assistant. For those of you who are not members, I'll see you again uh, next week. If you want to get an idea as to what else can be done uh, on a period case like, uh, like this, take a look at this video.